Greetings. I apologize for the day delay for this week's movie review. I had other projects going on throughout the day yesterday. However, this movie review will be the last for the next two weeks. As I'm taking a two-week sabbatical from reviewing albums, ranking albums, and reviewing movies. Plus, I'm also planning to relaunch my second channel, Jolum's World, for more details to come. Today on Joe Lum's Movie Review, I review an underrated gem from the horror film genre, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Don't forget, as usual, to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and check out past movie review episodes on my movie review playlist, which is in the description box. Time to get on with the video. The Tales from the Dark Side movie is a spin-off to the anthology series Tales from the Dark Side, created by George A. Romero and Richard P. Rubenstein, who served as executive producer of the series. The series was created in the wake of success of Creepshow, a movie I covered on episode 3 on my movie review series. Romero, along with author Stephen King, previously collaborated on Creepshow and its sequel, Creepshow 2, a movie I covered on episode 4 of my movie review series. But neither man returned for the third installment, which was Creepshow 3, in 2006. Subsequently, some, including legendary effects artist Tom Zavini, have referred to this movie as the true Creepshow 3, due to the similar tone, feel, and production ties to the first two Creepshow films. This film was produced by John Harrison. He had previously worked with Romero on many projects, including the Tales from the Dark Side TV series and Creepshow, providing the musical score for the latter. The first segment is an adaptation of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's 1892 short story, Lot Number 249, written by Michael McDowell. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was the man who created Sherlock Holmes and Michael McDowell, his claim to fame was writing the screenplay for Beetlejuice. The second segment is an adaptation of Stephen King's 1977 short story, The Cat from Hell, written by George A. Romero. The third and final segment is an adaptation of the legendary Yuki Ona from Lafcadio Hearn's 1904 book, Quidon, Stories and Studies of Strange Things, which was also written by Michael McDowell. The Cat from Hell, as well as another King story, Pinfall, was originally going to appear on Creepshow 2, but that was scrapped due to budgetary reasons. Go figure. Let's begin with the prologue, shall we? An affluent suburban housewife and modern-day witch named Betty plans a dinner party for her fellow witches. The main dish is to be Timmy, a young boy whom she captured and chained up in her pantry. To stall her from cooking him, the boy tells her three stories from a book she gave him titled Tales from the Dark Side. We then get to lot number 249. A graduate student by the name of Edward Bellingham has been cheated by two classmates, Susan and Lee, who framed him for the theft to ruin his chances of winning a scholarship for which they were competing. So as revenge, Bellingham reanimates a mummy and uses it to murder them. Susan's brother Andy kidnaps Bellingham, forces him to summon the mummy, then destroys it and burns its remains. He also burns what he believes to be the reanimation parchment. He considers killing Bellingham, but in the end, he cannot bring himself to commit real murder. However, Bellingham res resurrects Susan and Lee, having switched the reanimation parchment with a similar one and dispatches them to Andy's dorm, they greet the terrified Andy by saying, Bellingham sends his regards. <laughs> we then get to the cat from hell. Drogon, a wealthy old man who uses a wheelchair, brings in a hitman named Halston for a bizarre hire. Kill a black cat, which Drogon believes is murderously evil. Drogon explains that there were three other occupants of this house before a cat arrived. His sister Amanda, her, her friend Carolyn, and the family's butler, Richard Gage. Drogon 
claims that one by one the cat killed the other three and that he is next. Drogon's pharmaceutical company killed 5,000 cats while testing a new drug and he is convinced that his black cat is here to exact cosmic revenge. Halston does not believe the story but is more than willing to eliminate the cat since Drogon is offering $100,000. But when Drogon returns to the house to see if the deed is done, he finds that the cat has killed Halston by climbing down his throat. The cat emerges from the hitman's corpse and jumps at Drogon, giving him a fatal heart attack. Then we get to Lover's Bow. A struggling artist by the name of Preston lives in the studio with a skylight through a large stone gargoyle on the neighboring building peers down. His agent calls asking to meet him at a bar a few blocks away. The agent tells Preston that his artwork is unpopular and is not selling. So dejected, he drinks heavily at the end of the night. The bar owner, who is a friend of his, offers to walk him home. Along the way, Preston stops to relieve himself in a back alley. When he sees his friend shooting at a gargoyle monster, the creature attacks, severing his hand and then decapitating him. Terrified, Preston tries to run away, but the creature corners him and speaks, agreeing to spare his life if he swears to never reveal what he has seen. The monster scratches Preston's chest, saying, Cross your heart, then vanishes. He then runs into another alley where he bumps a lone woman by the name of Corolla. She claims to have become lost while going to meet with friends and was searching for a taxi. So he convinces her to call a taxi from his apartment where Corolla cleans the gargoyle inflicted wound on his chest and they have sex together. Preston's life soon improves as his struggling art career becomes more widely successful most of Corolla's connections. They eventually marry and have two children, but he is still tormented by memories of the gargoyle though, and his vow of silence weighs heavily on him. On the 10th anniversary of him meeting Corolla for the first time, he breaks down and tells her about the monster. Corolla appears uncomfortable by his revelation and then emits a heartbroken wail. You promised you never tell! revealing herself as the creature that killed his friend. With Preston's vow broken, Corolla can no longer remain human and begins transforming back into a gargoyle. Their children are screaming in the bedroom as they become gargoyles themselves. Corolla, now fully transformed, wraps her wings around Preston and the couple proclaim their love for each other, but with the vow broken, Corolla is still reluctantly forced to kill him by biting his neck before flying away with her gargoyle children. The final scene shows three gargoyles now turned to stone, sitting upon the building ledge, staring down at the city with sorrowful expressions. Then we get to the epilogue, which is the final part of the film. Betty remarks that Timmy saved the best story for last, but he says that the next one is the best and has a happy ending. But she replies by saying, none of these stories in the book have happy endings and it's too late. As she has to start cooking him. As Betty advances on Timmy, he narrates his own actions, throwing some marbles on the floor, causing her to slip and fall on her butcher's block and impaling her on her own tools. Timmy releases himself and pushes her into her own oven. The film ends with Timmy helping himself to a cookie and breaking the fourth wall by saying, Don't you just love happy endings? That's the end of the movie. The Tales from the Dark Side movie was released on May 4th, 1990. With a budget of $6 million to make, it did $16.3 million in the box office, opening in, third place date, opening in third place that weekend. The film has a rating of 46% on the ratings aggregation site Rotten Tomatoes. Based on 24 reviews, at an overall grade of C at Box Office Mojo. On Metacritic, the film has a rating of 54 out of 100 based on 13 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. The Los Angeles Times writer Michael Wilmington criticized Harrison's directing choices being too much ritzy film noir styling 
and self-conscious comic book frames, but said that there's more brain than usual beneath the blood and guts. The Washington Post panned the film, A Lame Effort. No kidding. TV Guide deemed the film dull, a, a, a depraved horror anthology, finding it to be overrun with flashy camera work and film noir style flourishes that pad rather than propel the already weak stories offered. In retrospective reviews, Odie Henderson of Slant Magazine observed that each mini-movie has the same tally of moments, greatness, grossness, and dullness, giving the movie an even-handed feel. Adding wraparound story notwithstanding, they want you to root for the underdog even if the underdog represents evil. Padre Cotter of Screen Rant noted while the film wasn't a huge hit, it was an effective entertaining anthology and agreed with the notion that it was a true successor to Creep Show 2. My overall review rating for this film is a 65 out of 100. While it was the real Creep Show 3 in a lot of critics' eyes, even mine, others have dismissed it for stating that it wasn't a blockbuster. And they're right. However, you cannot deny that whether you like this movie or not, you have to admit it's a cult classic. The whole Tales from the Dark Side series is a cult classic, so you can't complain about that either. So this has been Joel Lum's Movie Review. No movie, man.